Okay. Okay. Um, so I have uh, switched on the uh, recording uh, for um, recording purposes. So um, uh, my name is Zafa Iqbal, and I'll be um, taking you for the business environment session for today and uh, the subsequent um, sessions. Um, so today, what we'll be covering is L01 or L01, sorry, yeah? learning uh, outcome one. Uh, which is to understand uh, types of business organizations and their purposes. So have you done anything about the business environment before? As you told me, no, uh, you didn't do that. Uh, okay. And then you're doing other courses as well. Okay. So welcome to the, uh, the, uh, the business environment course. Uh, this will, um, this course is mainly to do with the, um, you know, introduction of um, business environment. What is business? Uh, what type of businesses are there? Uh, what are the uh, internal and external circumstances uh, in which businesses uh, differ uh, to their operations? Okay, and this will just give you an understanding, basic understanding of global business environment as well as uh, the types of businesses we have. Okay, uh, so first of all, we need to know what is business environment. And the business environment is the environment surrounding the business, of course, right? Uh, the people around uh, the business, uh, the people within the business, uh, people outside the business. So the environment is just a general environment uh, in which we operate as a business um, business unit. So we operate in different uh, circumstances, different environments, like we deal with the clients, we deal with competitors, we deal with the um, owners of the business, we deal with government law agencies, We uh, do with our customers, we do our employees, and we um, are affected by the economic uh, level, we are affected by the environmental, uh, global environment, and so on. Okay, so there are um, these businesses are business operating into a vacuum of internal and external uh, business environment. So there are two types of business environment, which is known as the, um, uh, the internal and the external so the business um, is a unit that's existing uh, in a place, in an or in, in somewhere or outside, um, or you know it can be an internet business, it can be a physical business, uh, but the main thing is it's affected by people, by law, by a market, by suppliers around it, and it's affected by the internal and external environment. Okay. Okay. Right. The internal environment. Uh, is what it is um, the inside of a business or inner unit of a business, which means um, uh, how the business is financed, how the business is run, who are the, um, you know, what is um, the equipment it's using, the type of uh, physical assets it has, it has a uh, human resource, it, it has some capital, it has some technological uh, equipment, it's got some management, it's got some uh, stock, it's got some inventory, right? It's got um, machinery and so on. So the internal organization, it has some kind of uh, uh, a management structure. It has some kind of um, policies and procedure, right? So it's the physical as well as um, non-physical environment inside uh, a business. So it's, right? So that's the internal, as you know, you're a businessman or your parents are businessmen, or your father is a businessman, of course, there's um, how he um, capitalizes or he uses his business. He has some employees, he has some uh, policy, he has some uh, uh, capital invested in the business, he has some machinery, he has some stock. So all this, uh, that's the inside of a business, okay? Now he is also affected, or the environment is also affected by outside the business, which is called the external environment of business, as it's affected by weather, it's affected by law, it's affected by um, other um, organizations, it's affected by suppliers, it's affected by customers. So that's the outside, okay? So that's the external business environment, okay? Now, the internal environment is known as the micro, uh, micro side of business, i.e. smaller um, level of um, business or smaller uh, business uh, focuses, which is the in, inner side of uh, things, okay? Um, and the external side of business is known as the macro side of business, which is outside the business, okay? 
um, things uh, as we, you know, um, as I explained to you, micro is inside and the macro is outside. Okay. Any, any questions so far? Are you okay with this? Hello? Okay. Um, so the external environment is, is relatively um, volatile and as well as the internal uh, environment of business, which is um, very volatile, okay? People like external uh, suppliers, people like internal uh, customers or people like internal employees, they affect the businesses, they affect the business unit, okay? Uh, so the, there's external and internal environment of business, okay? It's, um, the business is further uh, taken into consideration, further uh, it's taken into the types of business we have, um, the, the classified into different types of business environments, like the economic environment, social and cultural environment, political environment, technological, demographic, and natural environment, which is existing outside the business, which is uh, very important. Um, so we need to be aware what is a business and what is not a business. Okay, a business is there to make a profit. A business is there to make a kind of living. Uh, it's, um, it's a commercial organization. It's a, uh, a business where it's a, it's a unit where the main purpose of this is to make um, uh, profit and um, main purpose of, uh, you know, the business is to give return to the owner who has invested in um, terms of uh, goods and services. He has invested in, in the capital. He's um, uh, put his effort into it. What we call them, he has... Um, uh, put these resources into operation because he wants to make a, a living out of it. Um, so therefore, uh, he has uh, invested as an entrepreneur. He has come together uh, to organize all these resources, all these um, natural resources, all these capital resources, all these um, you know uh, equipment and so on. So what we call the factors of production, uh, he has um, put them together. Uh, and he has uh, tried to make uh, in himself into a business unit. He's um, wanting to produce goods or services, all right? Um, so uh, factors of production like uh, raw materials, um, you know, um, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, his skills, uh, his services. So he's known as the entrepreneur. So the four factors of production are there. He's become... Uh, a manager, he's become an owner, he's become an entrepreneur, and he's organized all these into a business unit with the intention of making profit. Uh, so making uh, sure that he earns himself a living, he can, okay? So the businesses uh, are there to make uh, a kind of uh, a need for um, people. They are there to make um, sure that people, uh, what people want and what they can produce um, therefore, it's um, a business is the one who meets the, the needs of the buyers and me uh, in order to produce goods and services. Okay, they focus on um, using resources efficiently. They focus on making sure that people get the supplies um, because he's an entrepreneur. He's come together to produce these goods and services. Um, his main focus is to generate profit for himself um, and he can reinvest in the business, okay? So therefore, uh, this is very important. So we said a business is something that's there uh, to make a profit. Uh, who creates this business is the entrepreneur who gets all these resources together. These resources are known as uh, uh, factors of production. Now factors of production are, um, you know, four factors of production, land, labor, capital, material, and the entrepreneurship, and he, organizes uh, them together to make goods and services for customers, for um, uh, people who want these goods. And there's because there's a demand of these products or services, okay?
Are you back, Mr. Um, okay. Omid Kumar? Yeah. And you yeah, hearing yeah. me? Okay, so, so this yes, is sir. what I said. Okay, so um, uh, the term stakeholders are, um, the stakeholder is very important. And the stakeholders are people who have an interest in the business. Uh, customers, of course, we have customers in, a, in um, a business people deals with customers and suppliers all the time. And they deal with the government and they deal with uh, uh, other competitors and they deal with other people, employees and so on. So these are all people who are called stakeholders. Okay, so the stakeholders are people who have a stake in the business, who have an interest in the success of the business because they are um, connected uh, to that particular uh, uh, business. They are connected towards that. Um, uh, they are affected by the business, okay? Okay. Are we okay in this? Yeah. Okay, just um, uh, any, any questions so far? Hello. Can't hear. Can you hear me? Hello? 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 Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, okay, so Hello? we just go away just sometimes. Um, uh, you're not hearing. Yes, I want to do a I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I Sometimes signals are breaking sense. Ah, right. Stick. Okay. Sometimes yeah, the signals are going. Yeah, it's so rain. So... Okay. I'm sorry about this. Yeah. Okay. So we said... Um, uh, the stakeholders are people who are um, who have an interest in the business, in the success or the running of the business. Do you know um, any any examples of a stakeholders that you can think of in your business? Stakeholder is a person who having a, a stock or resources. No stakeholders, not stock, but stake. S T A K E stakeholders. If you can see this slide at class exercise number one. Anybody yeah, who yeah. have an interest? Okay, so stakeholders are people who have an interest in the business or in the running of the business or success of a business. So, for example, uh, you have an interest in the business because you want to make sure that the business succeeds uh, because uh, it has to um, provide you some living um, or a livelihood. There are competitors who have uh, an interest uh, because they are connected to the business in the sense that they supply goods. And if you... Uh, if your business is successful, of course, they uh, will also live uh, their living. Uh, yeah, they have to earn as well, right? Yes. Okay. Or the government uh, also is a stakeholder because if you are successful, if the business is successful, the business uh, uh, people have to give uh, taxes to the government. So therefore, the government benefits as a stakeholder, right? Okay, and the people, local people, they get jobs and therefore they are the stakeholders as well. So the stakeholders is a general term that we use in, in, in businesses, which, uh, um, which is um, uh, affecting other people in terms of their interests, like um, the government, like the customers, like the suppliers, like the uh, local community, like the uh, owners, right? All these, um, or like the people who are employed, or the, anybody else who is affected by the business, they are known as the stakeholders, right? Okay, and it's very important that you understand uh, the stakeholders, the term stakeholders, uh, because everybody's involved in, in, in terms of uh, the business being affected. 
Okay, so, so you should be able to know what the stakeholders are and what they mean by uh, stakeholder. The other thing is we need to know uh, some kind of inputs. A um, uh, business has some inputs uh, required by the business, like in terms of um, uh, its uh, materials, its labor, its um, uh, suppliers in terms of land, labor, capital. Uh, all these are the units that are affected uh, they're affecting factors of production. So it's making uh, best use of those resources called the uh, use of um, resources. And then that's known as the entrepreneurship or a person who manages all these um, resources and become together to produce these goods and services. That's what we said initially, okay? Therefore, that's very important um, a term that you need to learn. And the third one is the generation of profit. The people who mm, are becoming or become owners of the business, they have to make sure that they generate some kind of profit. So they have to reinvest or they can reinvest and get bigger and bigger. Okay, so the stakeholders is a term very important. Okay, private businesses or businesses are uh, divided into two sections. Uh, like we have a private sector and the public sector. Now private sector are a, a sector that's owned by people, individuals, and the public sector is owned by the government. Um, in terms of who controls and who runs and who operates that business. So we have a private individual uh, like uh, you uh, who have a, a business, okay? And the government has um, a business uh, which is called the main uh, suppliers of uh, utilities, for example, or the running of railways or the running of national airlines, for example, or providing... Uh, uh, electricity or providing hospitals or providing education, whereas the private sector uh, are running uh, smaller organizations and bigger organizations, but they are privately owned and privately run in terms of uh, smaller businesses like one man shop, for example, two man shop or three man shop, okay, uh, or smaller companies uh, or takeaways or franchise uh, uh, businesses, right, or companies. So there are two types of businesses, one privatized business and uh, we have a, a public sector business, okay? Sometimes uh, these uh, private sectors is known as the privatization and the other one is known as the, um, the nationalization, okay? Um, so therefore you need to know it's, uh, it's important uh, distinction between the, uh, the private sector and the public sector. In, in, in Pakistan, for example, we have public sector and uh, private sector in terms of private owners who own smaller businesses uh, and the government owns, uh, uh, for example, national railways or national um, electricity company or the airlines or the hospitals, the education. And we have other private businesses in education in Pakistan as well. Okay. Uh, the other term, private sector or secondary and tertiary business activities, we have... Um, um, you know, the primary uh, business activities are uh, taking the raw materials, uh, for example, uh, making the uh, manufacturing um, of uh, raw materials, for example, not manufacturing, producing raw materials in terms of farming. This is known as the um, or fa farming or mining or extraction of materials from ground, uh, you know, producing farm tomatoes, producing fruits and vegetables and uh, making sure that people get uh, enough raw materials to eat, you know, fruit and vegetable to eat. The, this is known as the primary uh, or extractive industry. And um, when those goods are taken into the uh, manufacturing, uh, they are known as the secondary. And when those secondary are produced into finished goods, they are sold into the market and they are known as the tertiary sector, right? So um, primary sector, secondary, and... Um, primary, secondary, and tertiary sector are the, uh, the producing of goods and services, then into finished goods, then into shops and um, units sold into the um, public. These are known as the three sectors of the economy, uh, which we need to know, okay? Uh, another exercise we, you need to do is class exercise. Let's have a look. Um, you know, I ask you to place the following business activities in the correct columns. So we've got um, first uh, column, we've got um, some uh, kind of um, people who are uh, <coughs> uh, mainly 
using the raw material of the primary sector, the secondary sector, and the tertiary sector. So the first column is, for example, if you if you look at the coal uh, miner, this is a person who mines the coal, extracts the coal from the mining field, and he is known as a, a, a primary uh, sector worker. Okay, so you put them into the primary worker uh, in the first column, and into secondary um, into the secondary column. For example, uh, when um, uh, the textile worker goes into the um, secondary sector because he makes uh, clothes or he makes a cloth, uh, he's uh, classified into the secondary uh, sector. And in the tertiary sector, for example, uh, we use a um, uh, services sector, which is like the bank, for example, or um, you know, um, a nurse, for example, or um, a waiter. So we can classify that into tertiary sector. So the primary sector is the people or the, the first stage of production. And these are mainly extractive industries. They uh, take the raw materials from land and transport it to the um, market. The secondary sector is the sector that manufactures those produced goods into small finished goods and send it to the market for selling. Uh, and that becomes a tertiary sector into services sector, okay? So a coal miner, farm worker, um, you know, all these are fishermen, they are into the first column. Secondary sector is like an engineer, right? Textile factory, jewelry shop, uh, these type of people. In the tertiary sector, we like banker, or um, you know, a waiter, for example, or a nurse, or a state agent, right? These are the type of uh, people who work in the um, transport uh, company. They are, you know, they are providing a service, so they go into that third column. Okay. Um, then the production. Uh, then the businesses. Um, classified after having classified into these uh, terms, they, you know, they turn their raw materials, for example, into production that's gone into the um, manufacturing, uh, primary production, secondary production, and the tertiary services. Okay, so that's what we said. Now, we need to know, we need to go on to explain what we mean by different types of organizations. Uh, there are different types of organization in private sector, uh, like the sole trader, we have partnerships, we have uh, limited companies, we have organizations called cooperatives, um, we have, um, you know, charitable trusts and so on, okay? So in, um, in, an, in a sole trader, right, the main difference is this person is a businessman or businesswoman and only on uh, one, uh, one person deals with uh, business, right? Uh, number of owners is one right? Uh, unlimited liability. We have um, the owner as himself, the manager, and they provide the main resources for uh, producing these goods and services. They come together to form the unit and make with the intention of uh, making profit. Uh, if he goes lost, then he has no liability. If he's winning, uh, he may keep profit and reinvest. So there are advantages, mainly sole trader, independent learner, or independent um, owner, and mainly his time is on boss and mainly he has no um, you know nobody to tell him what to do what not to do but the problem are he has unlimited liability so therefore um, you know sole trader is one form of business then you have partnerships uh, whereas you have a uh, you know partners of 2 to 20 uh, they have again limited liability unlimited liability uh, in terms of uh, when they have problems and they borrowed more than they can uh, afford, then their resources uh, are utilized to pay off those debts, which is, um, you know, causing them issues. But um, the advantage of uh, going into business by partnership is that their responsibilities and um, their uh, duties are shared between themselves and they uh, can benefit from each other's expertise 
they can benefit from each other's uh, talent they can experience different um, experiences because maybe one person is an accountant the other person is a rich um, rich man they can get together and form into partnership and utilize services of both of these right so but the unlimited liability but the shared responsibilities are there one person goes sick the other can can take on so it's a joint joint kind of a venture with the main aim of uh, making profit for themselves and okay we have a private limited company and we have public limited company again we have um, you know public uh, uh, private limited companies where the the um, there's one director minimum of one director and so on in in the public limited company we have a, a number of directors uh, and they have a limited li limited liability both of them in 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 the public private and public they have limited liability which means that the shares uh, they don't lose um, more than what they have invested in the company uh, if they borrowed a lot of money and they've only invested one pound in the company then the most they lose is the capital they invested in the company so that's the biggest advantage of um, making a company uh, because they have limited liability and in the private limited company uh, is advantage as well as in the public limited company but the problems are that the, in both of these companies they are costly to form um, and they have a lot of uh, legal uh, formalities to fulfill like memorandum of association and articles of association i.e they have to fulfill some registration and it's sometimes costly they have to audit their accounts they have to fill their accounts annually they have to put them in with the registrar of companies and uh, so that cost can take a bit of time they have to uh, make sure that their accounts are filed annually with the tax authorities and with the registrar and, and they have to pay taxes so they're a bigger companies or they are bigger businesses they can form into um, bigger organizations can form into limited companies and the private or public and the main difference between private limited company is the public limited company can expand into asking people for shares asking people for money whereas in the private limited company they can't okay though so, so then we have a, a fourth or fifth form of a, a business which is called the cooperatives um, which are formed by people or by workers then they share um, these benefits among themselves but the, again uh, their liability is um, their you know un, their liability it can be limited or unlimited depending on the type of cooperative and people who share work uh, they can be benefiting from uh, materials or from uh, uh, salaries or from uh, you know uh, goods and services it depends on the type of cooperative they have um, so you need to uh, you know they can share in terms of profits or they can share in terms of uh, uh, work and they are uh, you know we have examples of cooperative um, like cooperative insurance company or cooperative uh, that started in Rochdale back a uh, long time ago whereby the workers were paid by uh, profits from the company uh, instead of uh, buying uh, goods from that shop they shared uh, goods and benefits from the cooperatives okay uh, then we have uh, charitable trusts and government organizations, other forms of um, businesses. Uh, mainly the, the, the government departments are divided into providing services uh, like the, the railways, for example, or uh, hospitals or educational services or utilities, some kind of utilities. Um, you know, uh, they are financed by the public. Uh, first, they are paid by the um, taxes, therefore the government um, runs them under their own control uh, by ministries and they are answerable, these organizations are answerable back to the ministries uh, because they are responsible for, um, you know, these organizations via uh, tax uh, revenues paid by them, so therefore they have to be accounted for. <coughs> okay. And, and that's the difference. And they mainly, uh, the government ensures that the community benefits. They don't make a profit. Uh, they can make a loss, and the government has to um, invest in that. Uh, but the main thing is, um, you know, the, they are not there to make um, 
profit they are make, they are there to give a service to the public. Okay, they are given service in Pakistan, in India, for example, in UK, public services like water, for example, like roads and services or hospitals or education. Uh, they're not run as a, you know, profitable businesses, but they run as a, a services. So this is very important. And, and so you can find out more, uh, you can read about these different types of businesses in, in your reading, okay? Um, so, I mean, in, in, you can see a picture of this in, in, um, as well in a pictorial form, uh, whereby you can see different types of uh, organizations under uh, a chart. Uh, and we have a public, under the public sector chart, okay? So this, we have discussed a, a sole trader, we, for example, uh, a sole trader like um, yourself, a businessman, one man person uh, who dealing businesses in, in terms of um, tailor, in terms of electrician, in terms of being accountant, in terms of uh, uh, a tailor, for example, or whatever. And we have um, said that there are advantages and there are disadvantages. Uh, the sole trader keeps them all the profits, uh, whereby his liability is limited. Uh, another advantage of um, a sole trader is he makes all his decisions, but disadvantage is uh, he can't um, <coughs> he can't do everything. And if he goes sick, um, he can have to he has to take a time off, and the business is going to be affected. Uh, he's uh, another advantage is he makes his own decisions. He's his own boss. He's a time manager. But there are disadvantages of unlimited liabilities, pressure of work, sickness, holidays, and so on. Okay, so you got to weigh the disadvantages against the advantages of vice versa. Okay, we discussed the partnership. Partnership when two or more people investing in business with a view of profit under the terms of 1890 Act. If they don't have an, an, an agreement, then they, um, they should write an agreement. But if they don't have an agreement, then they share the profits and losses equally <laughs> between themselves. Most of these partnerships have unlimited liability, but these days some there are some limited li liability partnership as well. Um, types of partnership like doctors and accountants and lawyers, they can go into businesses themselves and share duties and expertise and skills, um, you know, for the benefit of um, the public as well as um, they can uh, share their skills uh, for themselves and benefit from each other okay it allows them uh, to have a more flexibility in managing more capital more um, you know responsibility uh, more expertise they can share and uh, get ex an ex opinion from each other but the disadvantage is sometimes this agreement the conflict uh, you don't like um, you know people running over you so therefore um, you know there's a, a problem of um, conflict uh, problem of decision making there is um, you know unlimited liability again um, but you can turn the partnership into a limited partnership if you want to that's an advantage and you have more capital uh, okay we talked about cooperatives cooperatives um, when people uh, of a similar nature they want to go into uh, cooperative, they establish themselves like a farm farm cooperative and they do work together, but they share their profits between themselves and enjoy, um, you know, enjoy the, the working relationship. And so the profit uh, is shared because the work is run by themselves uh, democratically and jointly. Okay. Uh, there are some examples of where uh, in um, worker cooperative like uh, in Israel, like kibbutz, they work in the farms, they produce these goods, and then they share those uh, goods among themselves or make profit among themselves and share between them. That's known as the worker cooperatives, whereby the worker take decision, they run the business, they buy goods, they sell goods, they produce goods, whatever, and they uh, make profit and they're shared by the, the organization members, uh, not the, you know, uh, so like uh, these, right? So there are different cooperatives depending on uh, what type of um, cooperatives are, okay? Then there are private companies and public companies. Private companies are there to make profit uh, like the, you know, because they belong to public sector, uh, private sector. 
and they and because the investors they they invest in uh, their capital their labor their uh, their owners of them you know their owners of the business themselves uh, but the ownership is uh, known as the shareholders rather than um, you know um, sole traders or so, or so on because they are companies the company's directors are known as the shareholders and the company has limited liability uh, members um, are the uh, the shareholders in the company uh, private company cannot sell their uh, shares to public uh, they can only be uh, transferred within within the uh, you know within the company themselves the owners of the company themselves rather than the public they can't the main advantage is the private company and the public company as they have limited um, liability uh, the distinction is the private company is owned by the private uh, or shareholders the public company is owned uh, by uh, different members of um, the public and they can invest and uh, buy and sell shares on the stock exchange in the public company whereas they can't do that in the private company okay but both of these companies as we said earlier on they are limited liabilities they are prone to legal um, they are prone to legal restriction. They have to pay taxes. They have to register their account with the registrar of companies. They have to go through a certification, uh, which is called the memorandum of association and articles of association. They have to submit these papers to the registrar of companies to get a registration certificate. This certificate needs to be displayed in a company office so that public is not misled, misinterpreted. Uh, so is it a limited company or unlimited company? So therefore, uh, they, they both have to have a registered office. Um, they both have to have some directors. They both have to have capital. They both have to have um, all these documents um, rough and ready. Uh, the public, uh, in, in the sense of public company, they can ask for accounts to be viewed, whereas in the private company, they can't. Uh, view those unless they have to, you know, um, unless they are, um, you know, members of the company or, you know, very restricted um, inspection of those. So these companies are very important. So if you can see that diagrammatically, and then we have a, lim you know, we have a public sector companies, which is or public sector organization, which is controlled by and run by and financed by government. And they are mainly services sector most of them um, you know people working in hospital like national service national health service or the um, you know um, organizations like uh, water companies or hospitals or education sector and so on all these are publicly uh, run publicly owned which by the government paid by the taxes by the taxpayer and they have to be responsible uh, through the um, ministry uh, otherwise you know because they are responsible for taxpayers money they have to be accountable um, so for example we have uh, local authorities uh, who develop um, or who provide these services like uh, um, you know hospitals and schools and uh, you know running of um, uh, the education sector and provide the local services like council services and so on. They are responsible for carrying out these services and they are known as the public sector organizations and they don't have any thing to do with the, with the public. They are financed by the government, uh, responsible uh, by the, you know, government responsible to the public, uh, making sure that the finances and resources are spent wisely and to the benefit of the public and they are non-profitable organizations they are funded and controlled by the government organizations then we have um, uh, something different uh, and other type of organizations we have um, called um, uh, quangos uh, these are organizations uh, which in you know quangos are like um, um, you know organizations uh, although these are public bodies, um, they um, are um, responsible uh, to the ministers and they are responsible for um, resources used and um, 
therefore they are Kwangos. They are not really government department as such, but because they are funded through the government, they, they have to be responsible uh, for uh, answering any question or any accountability lies with them. They have to be responsible to the government departments. Um, for example, you have a, uh, talking about, um, we have, um, you know, um, organizations like the British Council, for example, uh, which is, uh, although not government controlled, but it's our financed by the government. Um, therefore, they, to carry out the services, to carry out the linguistic or the cultural services of the British government abroad or all over the world, they finance by the government. So therefore, they are responsible uh, to answer where the money has been spent. They are accountable to those. Uh, okay, so these, these are different types of organizations we've talked about, okay? Um, then now we're coming on to the objectives, um, you know, of the business. As we said, there are long-term objectives and short-term objectives, and there are external and internal pressures. There's, um, uh, we need to know about the size and we need to know about the status. Uh, we need to know uh, about the you know corporate uh, culture of the organization we need to know about the number of years um, of the business uh, that's been operating um, you know these are the factors that uh, determining uh, what are the objective it depends on their um, you know on their um, uh, on the size and status of the business so the objectives and the power of stakeholders what do they want from running off all these businesses, okay? Uh, so it's very important that uh, we know uh, why are we doing the business, you know, who are the business owners, what their objectives, what do they want to achieve, what's their short-term objectives, what their long-term objectives. And these, these uh, you can get them from the uh, objectives of um, mission and corporate objectives or from the objectives of the policies of the company and policies of the organization. And so, therefore, it's very important that we know uh, about these objectives, okay? Some are objectives can be termed um, uh, short-term, sometimes they are turned into uh, medium-term, and then the long-term objectives. Now, the long-term objectives are known as the strategic objection, uh, sorry, objectives, and the short-term objectives are uh, probably operational or tactical, and then you need to uh, make sure that the businesses <clears throat> have some kind of uh, policies and procedures in order to uh, do these or meet these objectives. Now, the short-term objectives uh, or tactical objectives or operational objectives is to do the running of the business, day-to-day -day business, um, you know, for the uh, running of the organization from a daily basis. So we have to make sure that we have we know what we're doing. And the long-term business objectives are you know, what, um, uh, what do we want to, or what do the business want in terms of uh, its expansion in 10 years time, where do they want to see themselves? So this is a long-term objective as opposed to short-term objective. Okay, that long-term objective is five to 10 years. Or so uh, the business objectives have different. Now the objective is to make money, the objective is the, to make profit, but what type of um, objective do they have in short-term and uh, the Long term, short term, mostly the businesses have survival, and the long term businesses expansion and in, and growth and investment, and so they want to make sure that they 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 capture their market and they capture their customers and make a loyal business to themselves. So it's a long term objective. So we want to make sure that they uh, achieve their objective. So therefore, the businesses have some kind of a strategy in place, um, and. Um, uh, the owners are there to drive uh, this strategy um, for for the businesses itself. Okay, so making sure um, you know your businesses achieve what we what they wanted to do. So strategic um, objectives uh, object, objectives can be achieving market growth, market share, capturing the customers, making themselves into a brand image, and so on and so forth. That's a long term objective. That's a you know, getting bigger and bigger, getting bigger and better and uh, making sure that the, they are the leaders in the industry. So these are the strategic objection, objectives, sorry. Uh, and the ethical objectives can be also uh, there for, 
you know, for an organization or for businesses, like the ethical use of uh, uh, business or ethical treatment of its worker or treating uh, uh, its, um, you know, uh, employees very nicely, making sure that they ethically, they are sound and um, they are uh, responsible to the needs and um, um, to the needs of the environment, uh, making sure that they contribute to the needs of the, the government uh, ethical programs, making sure that the organization uh, contributes to the ethical um, business uh, by not contributing uh, to pollution, but not contributing towards, um, you know, uh, creating a lot of rubbish, for example, or creating a lot of uh, garbage. So maybe creating some kind of a good uh, gesture for recycling, so that kind of ethical help for the government, okay? Um, so that's, um, you know, ethical objectives, right? Um, so you can look at that. Uh, there are, um, so these, these principles that you can, uh, different types of uh, or businesses, there are three, three uh, what do you call them, three objectives or three assessment criteria. And you answer those three assessment criteria that will get you a uh, mark. Um, but you can go for a, a merit. Uh, there is a merit uh, and there is a distinction as well okay so you can aim for a merit and distinction merit means uh, you go a little bit beyond uh, explaining and discussing or you know telling us um, you know what the question wants um, if you want to claim um, merit you need to assess uh, the extent to which a specific organization meets its stated purposes or objectives so you take an example of um, a business you take an example of a, a business like yourself uh, and then you ex you know you assess uh, to what extent um, does this business meets uh, long term objectives or short term objectives or the government objectives or your own objectives how does it do that uh, what kind of contribution does it make to the society what type of uh, contribution does it um, you know how does it do this uh, how does it meet its needs of its stakeholders how does it uh, carry it out, for example, you know, what does it do? Some kind of a, a training does it do or anything special that it carries out? So you need to assess the advantages and disadvantages and maybe kind of conclusion. Uh, you know, if you, you know, specialize or if you specify an example, that will give you a kind of a merit. And, um, you know, if you further extend this assessment into, a dis if you want to extend a, a, to a distinction level, then you need to be able to apply some kind of uh, <coughs> tools, um, you know, as to what your, mm, you know, what's your decision, how do they do that, and what's your evaluation of the uh, the policies and practices they do. Okay, so um, so the first um, what we call uh, what we say is if you look at the if you go back to L zero, uh, which is L zero one, which is learning uh, of outcome one, which is to understand types of organizations and their purposes. Uh, we said there are different types of organization and they have all different types of uh, objectives. Now the, you can look at the a small business. It has a different objectives to uh, a government organizations, right? The small business there is to make profit, whereas the government organization doesn't have an um, objective to make profit, but to create uh, a goodwill and make good services and Okay, so we said there are different types and there are, we said there are partnerships, we said there's sole trader, we said there's a government organization, we said there's cooperatives. Uh, you need to look at the advantages, you need to look at the disadvantages and the motivation behind different types of organizations. And we um, want to make sure that how do they meet their objectives? Uh, how do they do their, um, uh, how, um, how do they set their objectives, short-term objectives and long-term objectives? And we said, um, of course, um, you know, the, <clears throat> we said there are, um, you know, internal and external environment. All these internal environment, we look at uh, the running of the organization or the running of the business. And there's the external environment, which is affecting the outside of the business, um, which is the environment affecting suppliers and affecting the competition and affecting us in terms of our um, image and the economics, uh, you know, 
and where we operate as an external, uh, you know, uh, in terms of external uh, organization. So therefore, we, you know, internal and external organization, both very important for running of a business. Uh, we said there are um, tertiary sectors. We said there are um, um, raw materials. And we said there are finished goods. And we said there are uh, services. So we can turn them into um, primary sector. We can turn them into secondary sector and we can turn them into the tertiary sector. The primary sector is uh, a sector which is um, mainly extractive or getting the raw materials from land and putting them into a secondary sector which is turned into a kind of finished goods. And then once finished goods are uh, done, produced, they are sold into the market which is a sector or it's sold in the shops and they're providing service. So we have uh, these three sectors. Uh, so an example of a, a primary sector is raw materials producing farmer, then they produce into goods of um, um, in, in, a, in, a, in in terms of products, and then it's sold into the market in terms of services. So uh, um, you know raw materials, then have a finished goods, then you have a, a sector which is called the banking sector or capital services sector or the nursing sector or something. So these are the three sectors we can go and. Uh, <clears throat> You know, the person who uh, we said there's a per there are a lot of stakeholders. We said there are people who have uh, bring these capital in together. These are known as the entrepreneurs and uh, they produce goods and services. OK, so there are a lot of um, things that we discussed. Um, you know, there's private sector and there's public sector. So you need to know um, all of these. You need to know what is business and why it's important, what, um, uh, you know, why do they exist? What are their objectives? And you know, what's the chain of production uh, from raw materials into secondary and into the service sector and so on? Okay, so these are very important. Uh, and the general type of business is, um, you know, the general uh, term uh, we set out to do is the differences um, between um, organizations and the types of organization and their purposes. Okay, so their purposes um, range from shorter objectives or shorter term um, targets to longer term objectives, which is uh, into you know um, operational um, level uh, objective into longer term or strategic options or strategic objectives. So the all the businesses have different objectives in terms of their shorter, medium, and longer term objectives. Okay, um, so. We've discussed a lot of things, and uh, you should be able to uh, revise these. Uh, the, the notes are on the Moodle. Uh, please go and check uh, these uh, notes on your uh, Moodle. Um, so if you have any question, let me have it. If you don't have any question, then uh, we'll go uh, and close the session. Uh, you can, uh, when you do your assignment, make sure that you um, try and aim higher rather than just pass the subject. Uh, because passing is maybe, um, you know, satisfying the criteria, but I would like you to extend uh, the, the um, stretch your mind into aiming for a merit or a distinction whereby we do extra activities. Uh, so give an example, give um, your own evaluation, give your own um, recommendations uh, of a particular uh, a business, particular organization, particular uh, type of business and how does it meet its subjective so that will get you a quite a, a good marks okay um, so concluding this uh, today's session uh, we said the organizations are uh, you know different types of organization they are uh, smaller and they're medium and they're larger and they're financed uh, by different um, people or by the government private into public sector uh, we said there are different sectors uh, primary and secondary and tertiary sector, uh, whereby they are producing goods from uh, raw materials into finished goods and in, sold into shops as a service. Um, okay, so I would like you to look at um, your notes, go back to the um, uh, notes onto the Moodle and um, revise it. Um, if you have any questions, please let me. If you don't have, then I will uh, close this session. Uh, and we'll see you. If you want to go for um, a reading, you can go for Arnott Causes and Ethics, Chartered Secretary, December 2002.
or you can go and look at marketing91.com types of business organizations or business environment for your further reading. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day and see you uh, next. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.